Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Buffalo Sports Center video. I am Don. With me today is the co-founder of the Instagram, Kale. How are you doing today, Kale, on this Victory Monday? Pumped up. What a day. Uh, long way to go, hopefully, for the Buffalo Bills, but yeah, pumped up today. Absolutely. It was a fantastic night last night seeing the Bills knock off division foe, the Miami Dolphins, wasn't it? Yeah, 100%. Uh, not the prettiest of games, of course, but we got the job done, did the impossible, got the two seed in the AFC. Of course, it's playoff time, but before we move on tomorrow and look at the Bills and Steelers matchup, I think we should talk about how the Bills were able to pull off what seemed at times to be an improbable win. And, uh, Kel, the first reason I want to talk about is complimentary football here. And, uh, yeah, how, how did it work? How did it happen? Yeah, it's been Sean McDermott's MO since he got here in Buffalo, right? Complimentary football. We hear it after every game, right? The Bills got to get back to playing complimentary football. And that was what we saw. I mean, the defense did their job. The offense slipped up, you know, a few times throughout the game. But ultimately, they did their job. And special teams finally did their job, right? That hardy uh, punt return touchdown that completely flipped momentum, completely flipped the script of that game. So, yeah, complimentary football 100% there for the Buffalo Bills. And that's something you got to see each and every game, right? Because, again, with Josh Allen as your QB, you could take over a game at any moment. But it's great when all three phases of the of the game are going at full strength. And I think that's pretty much what we saw, minus a little bit on the offense uh, Sunday. Yeah, and uh, there there seemed to be a little wobble there when Gabe Davis was confirmed to be out. Who do you think really stepped up the most uh, in filling in his role in the offense? I think clear. it's pretty clear and obvious that it was Trent Sherfield, senior, that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, Trent Sherfield. I mean, he, again, all season long, I've been calling for him to get more looks. It doesn't seem like he's on the field that much, and when he is, he's not really getting targeted, and he's kind of a decoy route. But when they've thrown to him, you know, good stuff has happened, right? It's been very rare. I'd say both of his big games have come against his former team in the Miami Dolphins, and we saw that definitely last night. But yeah, what what a win uh, for the Buffalo Bills, and I think Trent Sherfield was a big part of that. Of course, the highlight of the night, I think, for me, minus that uh, punt return, was that incredible touchdown catch off the helmet. Trent Sherfield, you know, tippy towing <laughs> the, the end zone there. Uh, and, you know, what a catch there. And again, he, if he drops that, I don't know the way that offense was moving, if they would have even scored points at that point <laughs> in the game. So, yeah, huge catch for Sherfield there. And, you know, Gabe Davis, luckily, it is a minor injury, they're saying. So he might be back. But, you know, if he does have to miss another week or, you know, if the Bills keep going and he misses more weeks, I think Trent Sherfield can fill in. And I don't think the Bills will be too worried uh, about having to go into free agency and finding some old receiver that they'll have to replace him with. Yeah, so complimentary football helped the Bills tippy-toey their way into the postseason. Let's talk a little bit more about the Bills, but shift to the other side of the football. Let's talk about the offense, or defense a little bit, excuse me. And, Cal, in the second half, they were nothing short of spectacular, weren't they? Right? I mean, they, they gave up so few yards in that second half. And you look at that first half, and, you know... The Dolphins came in with a pretty simplistic game plan of misdirection, right? How many times did we see that that little fake toss one way, go the other way, freezing our defense up a little bit? And the first half they executed, but Sean McDermott schemed against it. And honestly, that first half, they looked pretty solid as well, right? But that second half, that is when all, everything changed, right? The Buffalo Bills completely locked down the Dolphins' offense. And then once the Bills got the lead all of a sudden Miami's game plan completely shifted to, you know, pretty much having to throw the ball. A chain, I think had two carries in the second half, which if you're a Dolphins fan, you got to be completely uh, upset about that one. I mean, a chain was, you know, doing very solid in that first half and to give him two touches in the second half is just, you know, just completely ridiculous from that side of the ball. But as a Bills fan, you'll love to see that the Bills eliminated Tyreek Hill. Um, you know, he still is a little bit injured and he had some big catches, but for the most part, I think they did a great job downfield. Rasul Douglas was injured. Dane Jackson, minus the first drive where he came in, was a great play. I mean, how about Dane Jackson stepping in, filling in for Rasul Douglas? Hopefully Douglas is back because I don't know how long he can sustain being, you know, that fill-in guy. But Dane Jackson, great utility guy on the bench. And how about Taylor Rapp? Two big <laughs> plays to end the game, a breakup and then the pick. Who would have thought... Dane Jackson, Taylor Rapp, and let's give a little bit of a shout out to Balin Specter. Did you yeah. see this one coming? Terrell Dodson exits the game with an injury. 
Balaam Spector steps in, and he looked like a natural in the middle of that linebacking core. Him and Terrell Bernard. Like, this is insane. Right? I mean, of course, you know, we, we bring up the linebacker position over and over and over because before the season, that was our number one worry, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Without Tremaine Edmonds, even though we weren't the biggest fans of him here, I, I don't know what's going to happen. We don't have a lot of experience. Milano's the only guy. Then Milano gets hurt. And it's like, okay, well, now we got to go get someone, right? No, mm. Bernard has been just, you know, one of the top linebackers in football. Terrell Dodson has stepped up, and he is, you know, PFF lists him as, like, the best linebacker in the league. I, I wouldn't go that far, but he's been great. I mean, great. So he exits that game, and we're thinking, oh, geez, like, th this is going to be brutal. I don't know who's covering the middle of the field. The Dolphins have such speed, even without Jalen Waddle. That team's so fast. They get the ball out in less than two seconds half the time. So it, it's very worrisome when, when T-Dot exits that game. Then we see Spectre in there, and I, and I know, you know, we're all kind of thinking, where is Dorian Williams, right? Williams has the speed. Spectre is more of the tackling guy, not really the guy for the job. I think he did a great job, like you said. I mean, Balen Spectre completely blew my expectations out of the water last night, and it, hopefully, if T. Dot does have to miss some time, Spectre can continue playing like that. Now, the initial reports are it is like an AC joint, I believe, mm. for T. Dot, not confirmed, just reports. I don't know if anything will be official by the time this video comes out, but. He should be able to play through the pain if that's the case. If not, maybe miss a week. But yeah, the, the Bills linebacking depth have, has just been incredible this year. And missing Milano for more than half of your season and still having these results, I mean, just absolutely speechless. Cannot say enough about the linebacking core. I mean, you go down the list, the Dolphins, they only gave up 14 points. Patriots, bit of a down game, but still four turnovers, only 21 points. Chargers, uh, 22 points. Yeah, Chiefs. 17 points cowboys 10 points the only bad game that i could remember even during when the bills were committing horrible losing streaks was that patriots game and probably the definitely the eagles game way back before the bye week but other than that kill this defense sean mcdermott we gotta give our praise to him because he's found a way to win with these group of guys yeah, ever since that hit piece came out about him, I mean, all of a sudden he is, he took that personally. I think the team took that personally. They rallied around their guy. And again, I'll, I'll continue to disagree with Sean McDermott's clock management skills and some of his decisions on that half. But this season overall, his defense has been just a tier, just incredible defense. You know, his, his schemes, you know, he, he he's out coached Mike McDaniel twice this year. And that's tough to do. I mean, I, I think the Dolphins have very good coaching. Uh, it, it worried me going into that game just because the op the, they're polar opposites, right? You got mm -hmm. the Dolphins who are very new school. You know, I, I thought for sure if they scored a touchdown at the end, they were going to go for two just because, you know, that's what they do. McDermott said no. He, he, he completely shut that down twice this year. And how about McDermott going for it on fourth down like three <laughs> or four times? I mean, that is, that is unheard of for Sean McDermott to do. And he just said, you know what? Nope, we got the guys for the job. We own this division, and we took it. So just just a great job for McDermott from that defense, and I think overall, just as a head coach, he had a great game. He had a fantastic game. McDermott, if there was any rumors that he was on the hot seat uh, at the midpoint this year, I think those have solidly cooled down now. We do have to see if the Bills survive against the Steelers in the wildcard round. But if the Bills do, they need their main man, Josh Allen, to be elite, just like he was against the Dolphins. Cal, Josh Allen took over another game <laughs> again. He did it again. Yeah, the, the Josh Allen experience, and it is, it's a roller coaster every single game, right? I mean, the first half of that game, we're screaming at him. What are we doing? Two bonehead picks. You know, you, you got that last play, that throw to Ty Johnson right before the half that NFL officiating, uh, listen up, that was clearly targeting. With that being said, still a dumb play. I mean, you cannot, with no timeouts, and again, I, I don't know why we're wasting our time out uh, on third down at midfield, blah, 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 whatever. You cannot be throwing that ball with 15 seconds in the middle of the field because you are not getting another playoff. And unfortunately, you know, I, I think that play had like a 50% chance to get in the end zone. Ty Johnson maybe could have dove earlier. But again, that's not the guy you really want diving, you know, your third string running back really trying to get in the end zone there. So just a bonehead play by Allen. Then he comes the second half, right? And he just... He, he's so different than any other NFL QB in the league right now. He can just take over the game like that. Like that third and what was it, 15, where he just took the ball, ran with it, <laughs> passed four defenders. The one guy didn't even want to touch him. I, I mean, he is just such a beast when he wants to be. 
And I think Josh Allen does get a little nervous. You could kind of see him, you know, make some panic throws towards the end of games. Yeah. But when it truly matters, I, I mean, again, you, we're always going to bring up this game, 13 seconds, just boom, boom, boom. He just, he's there. He, he's just making those plays, making those plays. Unfortunately, we know the result of that game. But again, you could look back at that game and see, you know, just what Josh Allen is and how Josh Allen plays the game of football. It's do or die with him, and he will not give up. He's going to do everything in his power to win football games. Yep. Sometimes it's not smart. <laughs> a lot of the times it's not smart, but, you know, sometimes it works out, and you're like, how the heck did he just do that? So uh, completely blessed to have Josh Allen as our quarterback, and I think a lot of people forget who we had before Josh Allen, you know, during that drought because we've had a lot of bad QBs. So as much uh, dumb stuff as Josh Allen does do, you got to be thankful that we got the guy because, again, I think he is one of the top QBs if not the top QB in the NFL, is just based on what he is able to do and his potential. Because at any moment of any game, he can take it over. Yeah, he can, and he did in that second half. He willed this Bills team to a victory. And, well, it's time for the playoffs. Somehow the Bills have a home playoff game. Can you imagine, and I, you'll see my reaction in the preview tomorrow, but the Bills having a home playoff game. Did any of us anticipate that, what, six weeks ago? Definitely not. I mean, I think we had a 0.1% chance, uh, you know, when we were six and six to get that two seed or, you know, to, to host a game and win the division. And it's just, it's just incredible, right? I mean, Pittsburgh is, I, I, I've been saying it for a couple of weeks now, Pittsburgh is kind of a wild card team. I, I don't feel safe playing them. And I know a lot of Bills fans are saying, oh, it's going to be easy. Pittsburgh stinks, whatever. It's never easy. Pittsburgh, you never know. This team never makes it easy. You know, the Bills never make games easy. But I'm a little nervous about Pittsburgh, but of course it's playoffs. I don't care who we're playing. I'd be nervous. But, you know, the Bills should be able to handle them. And if they do, I mean, you, you have another home game after that. Just just an incredible finish to the regular season for this team that looked dead in the water uh, about 12 weeks in. Yeah, this team was dead. We were just praying for even just a playoff berth, a wild card playoff berth. Somehow the Bills have found, lucked their way into possibly two playoff home games, but they got to take care of business against the Steelers, just like they did last night against the Dolphins. But, folks, that's it here from Cal and I. I was on. This was Cal. Make sure to hit that like button and to subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. Follow the TikTok. Join the Discord. All of those links will be in the description below. Have a nice Monday, Victory Monday, Bills Mafia. You des- we deserve this one. <laughs>